This video is a continuation of our ERGRP basics and configuration series. What we're going to look at here is some of the issues that can arise when you start advertising routes and those routes uh, transit a classical boundary change and then they become auto summarized. So we're going to go ahead and go to our router 2 here. Router 2 is connected to router 3 and router 1. And we're going to do a show IP route. And what we're able to see here is that router uh, 2 can see all of the subnets that are being advertised by all of the routers via EIGRP. It can see all of our loopback addresses and it can see our fast Ethernet segment over here on router 1 just fine. If we wanted to ping 10.0.10.1, we can ping that just fine. So if we go to router 1 and do a show IP route, we're missing a ton of routes. Uh, why are we missing those routes? Because they're being summarized. Via router 2, the loopback addresses that are advertised by router 3 cross over to a different major network boundary. Uh, it's crossing over and it's hitting the 172.16 class B, right? So if we're going to be doing uh, classless uh, subnetting, uh, CIDR notations and things like that, then you have to keep in mind that on routers that uh, those boundaries and uh, get crossed, that auto summarization is going to take place by default because by default EIGRP has auto summarization enabled. So if we wanted to ping 10.0.10.1 on this router, those routes are being discarded because the auto summary that's taking place, even though uh, a class, um, the, the, the 10, the 10 network is being uh, learned by EIGRP, showing up as D here, it's being auto summarized at the classical boundary, which is the 10.0.0.0 slash 8. And it puts the summary route into the uh, routing database and it configures it to an interface of null zero. And null zero will discard that packet if that advertisement and if that ping doesn't go to a specific IP address that's in that routing database. So what we're going to have to do is go back to router 2. And on router 2, what we will do is disable auto summarization. So let's go into our, um, our protocol for ERGRP. And we're going to go ahead and do no auto summary. And once we do no auto summary, what will happen is, is that it, this router would no longer summarize those routes at the classical boundary. So once uh, those subnets for the loopback addresses cross over to the 172 class uh, B, they won't be auto summarized and passed on. They're going to be passed on in the way that they were received. So router one should receive those routes the same way they're being advertised to router two. A graceful restart is going to take place when this takes place. Uh, so your adjacencies will, will drop for a second and then they'll reconnect. So we're going to do no auto summary here on router 2. And we can go ahead and do another show IP route on router 1. And as you can see, we're seeing all our loopback addresses now properly. So if we wanted to go ahead and ping 10.0.10.1, we'll be able to go ahead and get a successful return on those. So again, uh, EIGRP uh, auto summary is turned on by default. Uh, there will be scenarios, especially as, uh, as your topology and your network grows larger, uh, there are going to be times where you might have um, to uh, configure uh, the summarization on those routes, and you have to make sure that the auto summary feature is either disabled um, because uh, it can lead to issues like this with black holing and routes and, uh, and packets not being able to go to certain routes because of the auto summarization that's taking place at the class for boundaries. So this is TechJax. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward with this and take a look at, you know, setting up some feasible successors and, and, and looking at what EIGRP does with that. So this has been a little video demonstrating about the summarization feature and disabling it so that we can see of all our routes when they cross classical boundaries. So thanks.